Hi, are you considering moving to the UK or do you want to get sponsored for a tier 2 visa? Then you need to watch this video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my experience of immigrating to the UK on a tier 2 general visa and I'll also be sharing what are the three things that you should consider in order to improve your chances of getting sponsored for a tier 2 general visa. Hello and welcome to The Nimble Nomad. My name is Arjun and on this channel we talk about the tips, tricks and hacks to survive and thrive in the UK. In case you're new here, on this channel I share my personal experience of living life in the UK as a first generation immigrant. Now I've done a fair number of videos on my channel all about UK immigration and the visa application process but uh, there's a question that comes up very often on the comments section which is Arjun, how do I crack my first job and get sponsored to live in the UK? So I decided that I think I should address this and maybe I can do this by sharing my experience and what I think is probably things that you should be looking at if you are in a position where you want to immigrate to the UK based on a tier two general visa or just on a work visa to the UK. So uh, in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'll break this up into two parts. One, I'll first start going into my experience. So my history of how I moved to the UK, a little bit of my working professional background. And then what I'll do is I'll walk through uh, three things that I think worked for me just based on everything that I've experienced over the past 10 years uh, whilst living, whilst trying to move to the UK and therefore also uh, living in the UK. Now, before I get into the main content of this video, I do wanna clarify that the points that I'm gonna be talking about are completely based on my experience and how I came to live in the UK. So therefore, they may not 100% apply to you. Uh, you. What you need to consider though is, whilst watching this video and some of the tips that I'm gonna share, is uh, how do how can you modify and apply some of the things uh, to your life if you want to move to the UK. So a bit of background, I'm going to try and be as brief as possible, but hopefully the context and background that I provide about myself will help explain the points that I'm gonna go into a little bit later in the video. So I first moved to the UK in 2010 with my first employer and I moved on a tier two intra-company transfer visa at that time. So this is way back 10 years ago. And at that time, I was a fresh graduate and I had just graduated from my undergraduate degree and I had been working with my employer for a year. And my employer was a consulting firm and they had uh, offices globally all over the world. Now, the London office in the UK actually had a position which was opened up and they were recruiting uh, globally for this position. So I interviewed for this position and I was offered that position on a temporary assignment basis, uh, originally for six months. So I moved to the UK actually with the intent of living and working here in the London office because I thought it'd be a great experience and I was fairly young so I said okay let me work here for uh, six months and see how it goes. Now it so transpired that my uh, that the London office actually really liked me and they ex extended my assignment from six months to two years. Uh, so at the end of two years I felt like I'd really integrated into the London office uh, and I was doing fairly well at my job. So I wanted to move here permanently. Now, it so happened for a variety of reasons that um, the India office was unwilling to transfer me on a permanent basis because they wanted me back as well. So eventually I wasn't feeling like it, my career was going in the right direction. So I quit my job uh, around 2013. Now, I quit with an intent. Um, whilst I, all of this was happening in the background, I started looking at other alternatives. And one of those alternatives was to study. And uh, I started applying for a master's degree. And whilst all of this was going on in the background, I was actually offered a full scholarship to go and live in Japan. So I moved to Tokyo, Japan uh, to do a master's degree, which was paid for full ride scholarship and I lived there for a year. So 
this is an English course that I'm studying and I'm, I'm doing a master's in business. So I lived there for a year and at the end of, uh, so this is around the 2014 period. So at the end of 2014, I started looking for jobs again. Now, because I had lived and worked in the UK, I started looking for jobs here in the UK because I, I was coming to the end of my course. Now, it so happened that the, the competitor for my former employer was also recruiting in the UK and I had built a fair network here in the UK through my experience previously and I applied for a job uh, with this competitor and they actually incidentally were sponsoring tier 2 visas and that's how I came to live in the UK in 2014 and since then I've been living here uh, on a permanent basis basically I've settled in the UK. So that's, that's a bit of my background. Now let's get into what are the tips that I can share on the basis of my background. Okay, so there are three things that I can assure you that work for me, just based on everything that I experienced uh, in that entire 10 year period uh, of having lived in the UK up until now. And all of this is completely based on my personal experience, so it may not apply to you. So what worked for me does not necessarily have to work for you, but I do think there's some value in what I'm gonna share here. So the first thing that I think definitely works when you want to move and live in the UK is the UK work experience. So as I said earlier, I had two stints, right? So I worked for two years, left the UK, lived in Japan, and then I moved back. Now, when I was applying for my second job, uh, the employers that I was talking to actually were really focused on the experience that I had of uh, working and living in the UK. It's just because I understood the market, I knew what was going on in terms of business culture. I had worked with some of the British clients that I was working with whilst being a consultant. So all of those things actually worked really well. Now the second part to sort of the work experience in the UK is that I had also built a bit of a network here in the UK. So I spent two years and I worked really hard to build a network of friends and colleagues who lived and worked in the UK. So both of these things combined, um, I think the first thing was if you can move to the UK uh, whilst uh, in any shape, way and form, it will really help and enhance your uh, ability to get sponsored and live in the UK on a tier two visa because ultimately the employers are really focused on making sure that this is somebody that we employ will understand how we work. You know, they understand the British business culture. And then the second part is the network that I built actually helped me get referred to jobs. So, you know, people I knew uh, had moved on in their roles or their career, and you know, they were working for companies where people were looking for my skill set, and therefore I was able to get referred for a job or a couple of jobs. So, both of these things combined actually, as a UK work experience, really worked for me. And I think if you're looking to move to the UK, you should certainly focus on building that in any shape, way and form. Now, don't worry if you can't or have no work experience, the other two points that I'm gonna talk about will hopefully help you out. Okay, so the second thing is to make sure that you look for a employer that is willing to sponsor you. So this is very important because basically in order to get a tier two visa or any sort of working visa to live in the UK and work here, you need to be sponsored by somebody uh, or a business or an employer. Now, the government has a list of registered uh, businesses and companies which are sponsored and this is published and I'll add a link of this in the description below so you can go and check this out. And there's no point in applying for every job that's listed on a job portal or LinkedIn that's based in London or in the UK because if the company or the job is not willing to sponsor you, then there's absolutely no point in applying for that job. So the two things that you can do if you want to get sponsored is one, when you're looking at the job description, I think look for at the bottom, they usually say they're an equal opportunity employer or they say stuff like, you know, this, this job is open to sponsorships uh, for a work visa. So that's very important because if, if that's said there, then automatically the chances of you getting that job and getting sponsored increase. The second thing obviously is that if 
you can find, even if the job doesn't say, you know, they're willing to sponsor you, you can go and look at the different job sites and the kind of jobs that you can apply for based on your skill set and then look at the company and compare it to that sponsorship list that I've talked about because even if the job doesn't say that they're willing to sponsor you, as long as the company is listed on the sponsored list, they, there is some chance of them being open to sponsoring you. So what you could do is you could apply, get through the interview process, and then at the end of it, if you're not eligible for sponsorship, you could say, well, guys, I don't necessarily have a work visa or the eligibility to work in the UK. Would you be willing to sponsor us? And if they like you enough, and if you if your skill set fits the fits the role that they're trying to recruit for, you may well end up getting sponsored. So these are pretty. It's it's better to know the company rather than the company trying to know you, because it it enhances and puts you further down in the recruitment process as well. Third thing is is quite hygiene, like basic you know job application process stuff. But there's a bit of a nuance to how you can improve it and apply that to the whole sponsorship uh, side of things. Now, this is actually about improving your English, uh, focusing on revising and building your CV. And thirdly is practicing those interviews. Now, this may sound like it's really basic and can apply to any job and it can, but there are some nuances that you must think about when you're applying to work in the UK. So if you want to live and work in the UK, you need to speak really good English. I mean, it's, it's, it goes without saying. And if you're not from a native English speaking country, there is a likelihood that you will have some localizations to English in your own home country or your grammar may be slightly different uh, to one to the English that's spoken here in the UK. So it's important that you finesse and work and develop that. And the other thing is you may have picked up some slang, which is acceptable in a local environment such as your home country, but doesn't necessarily apply in the UK environment and you may end up offending somebody in the interview process. So it's quite important that you focus on building that skill set because employers here want to make sure that you can speak the language fluently, clearly, because ultimately you're going to be working with these people 24 by 7. And if you don't, if you're not understood or you can't communicate clearly, it can hamper your uh, ability to get the job and then eventually sponsored. The other side of it is uh, the CV and the interviews. So uh, making sure your CV is, is clear. It's important that the CV doesn't have unnecessary information that maybe is acceptable in your home country, but is not widely recognized or accepted in the UK. So things like, you know, um, a birth date or, you know, uh, local languages that aren't spoken here in the UK. I mean, you should get rid of any of those things which just don't apply. Just simplify your CV so that the employer can focus on your skill set and what you can bring to that specific job. I think a lot of people think that, okay, this CV works in my home country. I can just lift and shift it and apply for jobs. You will automatically just get rejected if you do that. So make sure you read the job description, look at what they're specifically looking at, use some of the language and wording that they've got there and then apply. It really does help and it definitely did when I was applying for my job here in the UK. And then finally, the interview skills are really important. So this is quite important because you could be, uh, you know, saying things consciously or unconsciously, which may be putting uh, interviewers off. So if you get to the stage where you're actually getting interviewed on a telephone call or now on a video phone call, it's important to present yourself in the most effective and uh, clear and concise way. So it's important to practice with maybe peers who are professionals who worked and lived in the UK or understand the business culture here in the UK. So all of these things combined, they, they you know, mold a well-rounded picture of a candidate who can be hired for a skilled role and therefore can apply for a job here in the UK. So that's it for this video. I hope it's helped you out. And if it did, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Um, before I end, I do want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel. I hit a thousand subscribers 
uh, a couple of days ago. So really, really appreciate and really grateful for your support. Um, I do also want to wish everybody who's watching a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Let's hope 2021 is a much, much better year than 2020. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Goodbye.